Um, this session is just an info session about the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador Program, introducing to you what exactly the program is about. And we have the community, one of the community program managers with us, Aaron Bloom. He'll be taking us through what the program entails and how you can sign up. After which we'll have two current ambassadors share their experiences. And then we'll close off with an overview of the different ways you can get in, in, engaged in other than the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador Program. So, Anthony, I think you can go ahead and start the introduction on the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors Program. Okay, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, and sorry, uh, Bethany, did you want me to go ahead and get started? Yeah, yeah, you can okay. go ahead and Perfect. start. I thought you said yeah. Anthony first, so. All right, excellent. Um, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Bethany, for having me. My name is Aaron Blum, and uh, I am a CPM, or Community Program Manager, on the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors Program. Um, so I just kind of want to start off and, and say that the program really um, uh, maintains and, and sort of strives to achieve uh, Microsoft's mission, which is to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. So that's kind of our underlying focus through really everything that we, that we try and do in the program is to uh, support that mission. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, so my region of focus is Europe, Middle East, and Africa, uh, although I'm certainly available to help uh, student ambassadors or, or those with questions about the program, regardless of, of where in the world they may live. Uh, I've been with this program for about two and a half years in this role. Prior to this, my background is in customer service and contact center management. Uh, the majority of, of my Previous career was spent in the video game industry, so have a, a background in you know a technical field. But this is kind of my first uh, role that is more in the space of education, and um, so far it's it's been wonderfully rewarding. So um, just a great opportunity for me, and then hopefully a great uh, opportunity and experience for the students that take part in the program. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me and connect on LinkedIn. Uh, I put my my uh, LinkedIn profile there. Uh, you can also email that email address, the cpm emia at studentambassadors.com, and that will also reach me and uh, happy to answer questions uh, there as well. So, just to talk a little bit about our global community, it, it truly is a, a global program. Uh, we have uh, students from every continent, with the exception of Antarctica. Um, and currently our numbers are and this number, you know, fluctuates a little bit because uh, we do have students graduate and then we have new, you know, new students join. Um, but currently the numbers stand at about 3,800 ambassadors worldwide at over 1,200 universities and in 107 countries. Uh, the uh, gender breakdown is 42% female, 57% male. Uh, 0.5 uh, identifying as non-binary and 0.5% uh, choosing not to disclose their, their gender to us. Uh, and that is, um, you know, we, we really strive for uh, inclusivity and, and to have, uh, you know, a strong representation um, of female, male, and then also those who uh, are non-binary or undisclosed to us. So hopefully that number uh, will, will start to get even more evened out. Uh, we've definitely made progress over the last three years um, since I've been here. I think, you know, there was when I first joined, I believe there was around 35 percent female. Uh, so that number has definitely increased, which is, is wonderful to see. So I'm not going to read through the entire code of conduct, um, but just want to let everyone in attendance know that this, the, the program does have a code of conduct that we take very seriously. Uh, and we, um, you know, at the start of every meeting that we have, we, we kind of present this and, and give a reminder. Um, and uh, essentially what it boils down to is that, uh, you know, our expectation is that everyone in the program will treat each other with respect, um, that we are welcoming uh, to, to everyone. 
uh, and provide a harassment free experience. Uh, and in the very unusual case that someone does experience uh, some type of harassment, uh, you know, we have uh, ways of reporting that to us, uh, including anonymous ways. Um, but we take those reports very seriously uh, if we do receive them. And, and again, that's been exceedingly rare. Um, but this is a place for everyone. So regardless of um, where in the world someone might be from or their ancestry, their age, uh, any any of those conditions, uh, this is a welcoming space for everyone. So some of the questions that I receive a lot about the Student Ambassador Program is who is eligible and it is open only to full time university students. Uh, so we are not open to uh, students at the high school level. Um, however, when we say university students, that can mean those who are pursuing a bachelor's uh, degree, as well as those who are in postgraduate degree programs such as master's or even uh, PhD or doctorate programs. Uh, and we do have some students uh, who are in those postgraduate degree programs. Um, also, if you start off in the program as an undergraduate, uh, and then you graduate from a uh, university with a bachelor's degree, uh, but then are proceeding directly into a graduate program. Uh, you do not have to leave the program and reapply. You can just continue on so long as you remain a full time student. Uh, once you enter the professional world, then unfortunately we do have to, um, you know, move you off of the student ambassador program and hopefully uh, you know, you'll be able to remain, uh, you know, in touch with with the program through our alumni uh, program on LinkedIn. And uh, also, you know, we do have student ambassadors who pursue uh, the Microsoft Most Valuable Professional Award after they have, um, you know, graduated from school and, and from the ambassador program. We are open to students 16 plus years of age and our only requirement in terms of your field of study is that it utilize some component of technology. So in the past, previously, we were open uh, to students that were pursuing uh, you know, some type of computer science or computer engineering uh, type of major. We've expanded that so that essentially all students, uh, university students are eligible regardless of their field of study. Um, the reason that I'm saying it's open to everyone is because at, really at this point, everyone's uh, field of study utilizes some component of technology. Uh, if you write papers using MS Word, you are using technology. Uh, you know, if, if you give presentations uh, using, you know, uh, PowerPoint, you are using technology. So uh, I think it's pretty much everyone at this point. And although the majority of our ambassadors are in, uh, you know, computer science or um, CS, uh, you know, related fields. We definitely, definitely do have uh, ambassadors that are in other fields, including medicine, uh, education, law, uh, all, uh, you know, just business. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, uh, regardless of your field of study, the program uh, is very much still available to you. Uh, in terms of when you can apply, so we accept applications all year round. So there's no window for applying um, to the program. I will say, however, that we review those applications quarterly. So four times per year, we review applications um, over a one month period. And then the following month, we welcome in new cohorts or new, new groups of ambassadors into the program based on those applications that we have reviewed. Uh, so we welcome those new groups of ambassadors in January, April, July, and October. Uh, so if you do miss a particular deadline to be considered uh, in, in one of those months, uh, you don't have to worry. Uh, if you submit the application, you know, uh, a little bit past the deadline, then it will automatically be included in the next review that we conduct. So um, there is not any true deadline for when you should submit an application. Um, it's simply to be considered for one of those uh, the cohorts in January, April, July, or October, uh, the deadline is typically um, the two months previous. So for, uh, let's say for July, which we are coming up on, the deadline to apply to be in the July cohort was May 31st. So the last day um, of the month before the month before. So two months before. Uh, sorry if that got a little confusing, but 
Uh, and then also we do have a nomination um, program. So existing student ambassadors can submit a referral. Uh, so if you happen to know someone in the program, maybe you've uh, worked on a team with them or are classmates with someone who is in the student ambassador program, uh, they can write a referral on your behalf. So when they log into the student ambassador website, they will see a button for nominating uh, for nomination and they can nominate you. Uh, the important thing to keep in mind is that they should submit that nomination before you have signed up on the student ambassador page and submitted your uh, application. Um, the reason that they should do the nomination first is because um, they're doing so will send you an email with a link to click to bring you into the application process. And that is how we link their nomination with your application. So. Uh, again, just a reminder, if you do get someone to submit a nomination on your behalf, they need to do that before you have started the application process. Uh, so this is just a quick look at what you will see when you visit the uh, studentambassadors.microsoft.com page. Um, there's a big blue button for apply. Uh, it will require you to sign in. Um, and so, you know, you'll need to create a Microsoft login there, um, but then after that you can begin the application process and apologies for the uh, font being hard to read here. Uh, please don't worry about, uh, you know, trying to, to read the small print, but I just wanted to show an image of what the application uh, looks like to give you an idea and, and make sure you know you're in the right place if you reach that. Um, and essentially each of these drop downs has fields that we uh, require you to fill in. So uh, just information on privacy, and then we ask for personal information, your academic institution uh, and application questions. And that's the field that I've expanded here, just so I can kind of show you that uh, we do have three questions that you uh, need to answer. And um, they are on three different topics. Uh, so inspire, teach and promote. Uh, and one of those uh, does need to be a video answer. So basically we ask that you uh, record your answer to the question and submit the link to that video recording for us uh, to review. Um, and that is a requirement. It will prompt you, you know, to go back and enter the link to that video uh, if you have not done so and, and tried to proceed. Uh, so in terms of you know tips on how to answer of course i can't give you you know exact answers to give uh, but what i really try to emphasize is be yourself use your own personal experiences in these answers um, we are trying to get to know you as a candidate through this application so um, you know don't worry about what anyone else has written uh, there are you know some videos on youtube and, and other channels uh, of people's you know answers um, but I would say, you know, it's it's really best to steer clear of those and and not try to worry about what someone else has said, but really share your own thoughts, your own experience with us. Uh, and that's the best way for us to get to know you as a candidate. Um, there's no required length that I'm aware of. However, you know, we, we do look for, uh, you know, some effort to be put into these answers. Um, so you don't have to write a novel. You don't have to, you know, spend hours and hours, you know, trying to, to write a long response to us, but also single sentence answers, uh, you know, that are just extremely short and, and don't have any details. Um, you know, that is also typically not uh, not reviewed, you know, favorably when we go through these applications. Um, so again, the, the right length is uh, up to you. Uh, for each of these answers. For the video answer, we typically do say between one to two minutes is a great length um, for your video response. Um, if you slightly go over, it's not going to you know, cause any any <laughs> um, disqualification or any problem with your application, but but that's the kind of the duration that we recommend. So once someone has been accepted into the student ambassador program, there are some program requirements uh, and uh, they are basically designed to ensure that you are getting the most out of the program. Uh, and the way we think that happens is by staying engaged. Uh, so uh, before day 30, uh, we do ask that those who are new to the program have signed on to our uh, student ambassadors tenant of teams. So we have a, a, a special what we call a tenant of teams where all of the student ambassadors um, 
automatically have access, um, but those outside the program do not have access. So it's a place uh, for ambassadors to um, really uh, network and get to know each other and ask questions, provide answers to questions, uh, and also to interact with uh, myself and other members of the program team. Uh, and uh, I will say that's the, the place where I answer um, the vast majority of, of questions that come to me is, is on Teams where I can chat live uh, with all of the ambassadors. Uh, so before day 60, we ask that ambassadors new to the program have started a learn path on Microsoft Learn. Uh, so you may have noticed when I mentioned the team name, uh, it's, it's kind of a long name, <laughs> the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassadors Program. Um, but that is, be, you know, we, we wanted to emphasize that our program is about learning and um, we really encourage those in the program uh, to utilize the MS Learn platform to the extent possible. Uh, so before day 60, we ask that um, those new to the program have started a learn path. Um, by day 90, we ask that uh, you have attended at least uh, one uh, what we call an all ambassadors call. So uh, there will be calls um, that are, are hosted by our program leadership team where we share information, uh, opportunities, uh, just any changes to the program that, that we wanna make sure everyone's aware about. Uh, so uh, that is one of the requirements that um, you know every 90 days uh, you drop into one of those calls, or if it is not a call that you are available to uh, attend live that you review and listen to the uh, recording of that call. So all of our calls um, are recorded and stored uh, in a uh, directory so that ambassadors can reference them and go back and watch them whenever they need to. Uh, there is also the listing here before day 90 to attend an extra credit club call uh, and uh, to do so every 90 days. Uh, I will say that at the moment, the extra credit club, as we call it, is uh, kind of on a hiatus or taking a break while we review, um, you know, how to kind of restructure that feature of the program. So uh, at least for the time being, this one you can disregard. Um, and then before day 120, uh, what we ask is that you have completed that learn path that you started on MS Learn which will automatically advance you to the alpha milestone in the program, uh, which also results in your benefits being unlocked. Um, so uh, we have some, some great benefits that I will cover here in a moment, uh, but reaching the alpha milestone by completing uh, the MS Learn um, learning path is how you will unlock those benefits. And then before your one year program anniversary, we ask that you have hosted an event um, and when we say hosting an event, we mean either in person, if that is allowed um, by your university authorities and your local government um, to host in-person events now, uh, but also it can be a virtual event or a hybrid event that has both guests in person and online. Um, and when we say host an event, we are also referring to you um, presenting or giving an instructional uh, kind of presentation on a Microsoft related technology product or service. Uh, and then our ask is that every year you host at least one such event. Um, that will advance you to beta milestone, which again will open up some other benefits and opportunities for you. So this is a uh, kind of a, a depiction of the student ambassador roadmap. Uh, so when you first join uh, the program, you are uh, listed as a new ambassador. Um, you do uh, have the ability to engage on uh, teams uh, and to uh, also join what we call leagues. Again, I will cover leagues uh, in just a little bit here. Um, when you've completed that learn path and reached alpha, you unlock your benefits. So this includes Azure. Uh, um, a certification, a free Microsoft technical certification exam voucher, uh, and then also access to LinkedIn Learning, where we also have um, curriculum that we promote. Uh, so we look to MS Learn platform um, for a lot of the technical instruction, uh, but on LinkedIn Learning, we have a curriculum uh, that we um, set aside for student ambassadors that kind of focuses on 
what we call soft skills or some of the other um, you know areas that uh, we think will help to prepare you for your professional career. So you have th those two platforms for learning that we uh, make available and, and really encourage all ambassadors to use. And uh, as I mentioned, when you have completed or hosted that event and reported that event to us, uh, then you reach beta. Uh, so uh, at beta milestone, you unlock another free Microsoft technical certification exam. Uh, and then um, we also have uh, prizing that we make available for those who host an AI gaming tournament. So AI gaming tournaments are a great kind of um, event in a box, if you will. So an event that you can uh, set up where um, we work with our partner, uh, a company called AI Gaming, um, to allow uh, those in attendance to take part in a, a coding uh, competition, if you will, um, that is uh, really easy to get into and get started with. Uh, and um, there are some some fun games that are part of that. Um, and uh, basically you can earn prizing uh, to give out for that as well. Uh, it's also at beta milestone that you will be sent your swag box, which I know a lot of the ambassadors really look forward to. Uh, it has some some really cool Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador branded uh, items in there so that you can represent the program on your, your campus. Um, and those are sent out monthly. So if you reach beta milestone, then you should receive your swag box. I say within two months because um, uh, those are sent out once each month. So if you have just missed the sending of it for one month, then it may be, you know, uh, slightly over one month before you receive yours. But um, it is sent out automatically. All you need to do is make sure that your shipping address is listed on your uh, student ambassador profile, and then we take care of the rest. And then uh, it's at beta milestone that you become eligible for consideration for gold milestone. Um, so uh, really what helps us determine uh, who will be selected for gold milestone uh, uh, is to look at those who are most active in the program, most engaged uh, and you know really learning them, you know, making sure that they are, are learning and, and continuing to skill up, but also those who are uh, hosting events and, and really working to help others in their community, whether that's their school or their local community, uh, helping those folks to also uh, continue to grow and, and develop their uh, knowledge and uh, of technology and such. Uh, so the gold selection occurs twice per year. And this is a review process that the members of the program team, myself and the others, go through where we will review candidates. And there also is a nomination process that can be used for people to nominate themselves if they think they are deserving or nominate someone else. And um, when you have been selected for gold, uh, I should say if you have been selected for gold, it unlocks four more of those certification exams. So you can continue to get those Microsoft technical certifications free of charge. Uh, and then uh, it also kind of opens up uh, opportunities for you to be, uh, you know, to attend special events or to be even a speaker or presenter at some events. Um, and then it, uh, you know, also uh, kind of, I won't say is an automatic for reaching uh, or being awarded the, the Microsoft Most Valuable Professional Award, you know, after you have entered the professional sphere. But uh, it is kind of a good pathway towards reaching that MVP award. Um, so we can help with that application process for MVP if you are interested in that after you have graduated from university. Um, and uh, that kind of covers the um, milestones in the program. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about leagues. Uh, so leagues are an internal part of uh, the program that are meant to allow uh, those ambassadors in the program to really focus on a particular area that they have an interest or passion in uh, and to you know, interact directly with others who share that same passion. Uh, technology is a big uh, field. There's lots and lots of different uh, kind of categories that that fall under that technology umbrella. So uh, the leagues, you know, provide a way uh, for ambassadors to kind of hone in on the particular ones that they are most interested in. Uh, we do have a focus league each month. So one of these areas that we are focusing on 
Um, and then we also have social impact leagues, which um, are still, of course, related to technology, but uh, focus on um, a different uh, area that has to do either with digital accessibility, education, green tech, or healthcare. Uh, and we actually have a quarterly, um, also, uh, social league uh, project that uh, you can join uh, with a team of other ambassadors. So there's a quarterly uh, registration for that, and then it goes for three months uh, with the idea being that you will, uh, you know, develop a, a product or a project in one of those social impact uh, areas um, and then be able to present on that at the end of uh, the three month period. So the league experience um, really is about just continuing to learn and grow. So completing uh, learning paths on MS Learn um, and, uh, you know, spending some time to uh, understand and learn uh, which paths uh, and, and job roles align to the topic that you are most interested in. There's also uh, workshop content that is readily available for uh, those that take part in, in the league activities. Uh, and there's also an opportunity to uh, create workshop content that other ambassadors uh, can then use in their journey. Um, really, I think the, the best part about the league experience is the collaboration on projects. Uh, so it's really a focused way for ambassadors to work together on a shared goal and um, uh, you know, work to not just skill themselves up, but, but help each other skill up. So that is my presentation. I was aiming for 30 minutes, so I guess I came in a little bit under, but uh, if you do have any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. Uh, also, you can feel free to ask me any questions um, you know, by reaching out on LinkedIn, um, and, and Bethany, I'm sure, can also uh, you know, answer questions that you might have uh, you know, if you think of one after this meeting has ended. Yeah, so we'll give at least three minutes for anyone with a question. You can either raise your hand or type the question on the chat. So if you have any questions, the floor is open. And I guess, you know, while we're waiting to see if someone has a question, I will just say that you know, I am frequently asked, uh, you know, what's the, the best part about, you know, the program? Um, and I, I really think it is the people, the opportunity to meet people from around the world who you might not otherwise have the chance to meet and get to know. Uh, we see, you know, great uh, friendships develop uh, through the program um, and, you know, people continuing to stay in touch even after they have left the program from all parts of the world. So uh, people from you know, Africa working with people from Australia or South America, people from Asia you know, working with people in North America. Um, so just you know, really a great opportunity to, to um, expand your network to a, a global kind of, um, a truly global uh, network where you uh, can, can meet people and work with people from around the world. So uh, question, can you apply to this even if you are in your first year? Absolutely. Uh, if you are a full time university student, then we welcome your application and you don't have to worry about being an expert, uh, you know, in your field of study. Uh, this is about a, a, a journey of, of educational growth. So uh, if you join in your first year, then the awesome thing is that you've got some great years in the program ahead. Um, you know, if you join in your final year in school, of course, we still welcome you, but, uh, you know, you won't have as much time in the program. So, yes, first year students, please apply. Yeah, we have Olive whose hand is raised. Olive, you can go ahead and ask your question. OK, hi, everyone. Um, so my question is, uh, I realized that in the technical league se section, sorry, the, there's no cyber security. So does that mean if you're, if for example, you're, um, you make it to be a Microsoft student uh, ambassador, 
you will have to choose the technical leaks that are there or because there's no cyber security what if your interest is in cyber security will you yeah, have so to that's choose a, a leak that's there so great question so and and of course cyber security is a a big thing um, you know, I, I would say, uh, and, and there are lots of people in the program whose focus and passion is in cybersecurity. Um, so uh, the leagues are, you know, there, uh, and, and we again, we focus on one of those technical leagues each month, um, but that does not mean that you cannot um, take part in, you know, activities or uh, presentations that are related to cybersecurity. Um, we have, you know, people, um, you know, that uh, both uh, students in the program who are focusing on cybersecurity and then also frequently, you know, uh, ambassadors will host events that um, have uh, speakers who are in cybersecurity in that space uh, in the professional sphere. So um, just because we don't have a, a league set aside for it uh, does not mean that you can't continue to learn and grow in that in that particular field. You definitely can. Um, and that's an interesting thought. You know, I will maybe share that with uh, the organizers of those leagues that that might warrant a um, its own league uh, for cybersecurity, just given how big and important a field it is. OK, thank you. Yeah, there's one last question on the chat. So Samson is asking, when is the next intake for the program? Sorry, when is the oh, next intake? Let me see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. So we so we are we just finished uh, or are in two days. We'll be finishing the review of applications for um, the group that joins in July. So it it is not possible to apply to be in this group that will join in July. Um, but the next time that we will be welcoming uh, a group of ambassadors is in, I believe, let's see, it should be October. Um, I'm going to just go back and double check my, uh, my notes here. I'll find the right slide here. Yeah, so uh, October is the next group that we will be welcoming. Uh, so what that means is that um, we are reviewing applications the month prior to that, so September. So to be considered for the October group, you would need to apply by August 31st. Okay, I think that's all the questions. Thank you so much, Aaron, for your time. Uh, if you have any other question, be sure to reach out to me or Aaron and you can be able to get an answer. So there's also a follow up question from Samson. So he's saying he applied in April, but his application has not yet been reviewed. So does that mean he has to wait until the next intake or when well, will so the review take place? Yeah, if you reviewed in April, then your um, application should have been reviewed this month during this this month that we are currently in. Um, one thing to make sure of is that if you have submitted an application to us, uh, make sure that you did not go back to make any changes to the uh, application uh, and then forgot to resubmit because we do unfortunately see many times that people ask, you know, why why was my application not reviewed? And when we look, we can see that they went back in to make a change um, or to update something, but then did not resubmit the application. Uh, so that is important to remember to do that. But if you did that, then the application you submitted in April should have been reviewed this month that we are currently in for consideration um, for the July cohort. Uh, and I will also say, you know, we are a um, you know, a, a program that reviews applications, but but not all of them are always accepted. So if for some reason you are not accepted, uh, you know, please don't let that discourage you from applying again. Um, and, you know, you can kind of think about your answers, maybe try to add some more details to your answers uh, and, um, and and please do reapply. Uh, we, we understand that it's disappointing uh, if you apply and are not accepted. 
um, but we welcome you to apply again and um, you know hopefully get in uh, to the next group if you did not did not uh, receive an approval email. Okay, I think that's it for the questions. Thank you so much, Aaron, for your time. So at this point, we have another student ambassador on the call. Uh, so Victor, he's called Victor Sabare, and he'll just share his experience in the next five minutes, sharing his experience as a student ambassador, how the program has been able to help him. And then from there, we'll have a past student ambassador she also share about her experience as a student ambassador and how it has helped her in her current role. So thank you so much, Aaron. If you have any question, be sure to drop them on the chat or just raise your hand. So next we'll have Victor. Victor, can you be able to hear me? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Sure, you can go ahead and in the next five minutes share about your experience as a student ambassador how the program has been and what you're planning to do in your university. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I I applied for the program, I think in uh, March this year. And uh, the main reason why I applied for Microsoft, the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador Program is because I wanted to start a community uh, around AI and uh, data science in the in my university campus that is uh jquat uh, jquat current because uh, uh we had a new course being introduced and that is uh the bachelor of science in data science and analytics uh, it was a pioneer course and so uh the tech ecosystem around the campus hasn't been vibrant over the years because a lot of business courses and uh, law courses have been offered in uh, in that campus. So I wanted to have a community where I could uh, make a difference and lead others in learning and sharing about data science in AI. But what I've come to know is that the opportunity that Microsoft Learn has provided me is that I can uh, I can make the community bigger. It doesn't have to stick on the lines of AI and data science alone. I can try to reach to people who are involved in, who want to get involved in cybersecurity and uh, her, um, IoT and uh, other areas in tech. So. Uh, Microsoft Learn is giving me an opportunity for me to build a community around campus, and that has been very empowering to me. And uh, the good thing being the program is there are so many resources. <laughs> there are so many resources to get. You get a hold of that. Sometimes it may be hard on uh, the uh, on what to use and what not to use. For example, when I got when I got the the Microsoft, uh, when I got the LinkedIn Learning subscription, I was very excited. But I think I've only taken like two courses, two courses on leadership and uh, and public speaking because I'm working on my I'm on, on my public speaking for me to be able to to have a community, and uh, it's been fun. I didn't believe that. I could. I, I didn't think that I had it in me to rally up people and uh, try to build a community by myself. Of course, by the help of some of the people, some of my classmates. But uh, so far, the the program has been has been good. The resources from Microsoft are are uh, it's it's uh, it's like nothing else. I couldn't say it's. It's uh, the most wonderful thing that has happened to me so far. And uh, I I saw that uh, Catherine, I think there was a question from Catherine asking whether you, it's okay to apply when you're in the first year. Well, I am currently going to my second year, meaning when I got admitted to the program, I was in my first year. That was uh, last semester. So it's 
possible for you to get to the program in your first in your in your first year and uh, you can make a uh, change and a uh, difference with the with the platform and the opportunity that Microsoft is offering. So I very much uh, advise everyone to get involved in the workshops and the programs that we try to run in the campus and also for others to apply because we need uh, a big pool of ambassadors around our campuses for us to have a network and how to and uh, for us to make change if we want this program to be successful in Kenya and uh, in JQuad specifically. Uh, Bethany, I think I've, I've finished. Ah, thank you so much, Victor. So Victor is from the current campus, JQuad. I'm not sure if we have anyone else from current campus here. But we also have another ambassador from JQuad main campus. She's called Felices Kavu. She wasn't able to join in, but she'll be joining in. She'll be speaking to us another time when we do another session. So yes, we need a lot of more ambassadors to be able to make more impact in JQuad. So the other person I'll introduce is Julia Mururi. So Julia Mururi was a student ambassador from Delan Kimathi University and she's currently a Microsoft employee. So Julia, maybe you can unmute and share your progress in the community, how you became a student ambassador and how it has helped you in your current career. Yeah, over to you, Julia. Okay, um, thank you so much, Bethany. So are you able to hear me well? Yeah, yeah we can hear you. Cool, so hi everyone. Um, as you've heard, my name is Julia Mujuri and I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. Uh, but the reason why I've joined this call is because I'm an ex-student ambassador. So I was invited to just share briefly how my journey was into the student ambassador program and how that helped me land my current role at Microsoft. So my journey started back in 2019. So that's when I joined the program. I got accepted in September of 2019. And just a step back to how I even got to, uh, you know, join that program. Um, so I was I was pursuing IT in the Dan Kimathi, but believe you me, I was pretty green to tech. Like I had no idea what I was doing in school for the better part of my first year. So there happened to be one student ambassador from, from my university. And at that time, we only had four ambassadors in Kenya, and one of them was from Dekut. And so I saw him organize a lot of, you know, C-sharp classes, and I was just curious. I happened to attend a few of the classes, and I got interested in the fact that he was just a student, and he was able to empower other students during his free time. So um, I really took that challenge to myself. I started learning, and the little that I could share with others, I just started doing that. Then he saw how passionate I was um, about empowering my, my, my classmates. And so he recommended me to apply for the program. Now, um, what happened was that he was actually pushing me to apply because I was a bit resistant because I really didn't know the benefit of applying for that program. I didn't even think I would be able to make a good ambassador. So he would keep calling, hey, Julia, did you submit your application? I would say no, he would call a second time, the answer is still no, until I just decided to apply for the program just to shut him up. So basically that is the reason why I applied for the program. And in September that year, I got my acceptance mail and that's when I realized that, okay, so the fact that I just love helping people is enough to get me into this into his program, not the fact that I'm the best at anything. And yeah, that is where my, where my journey began. and. Um, we started by putting together a community, a Microsoft tech community in our institution because we didn't have one at the time. So we would have a few sessions with the community members just to try and teach them the, the different Microsoft products and the Microsoft student opportunities that we had. Then COVID happened and we now turn to uh, virtual, virtual sessions. And in, in this case, the audience wasn't really um, students from our school but rather students from the entire country. So that is kind of how 
we transitioned from having the in-person events in school to having nationwide um, virtual sessions online. So that went on and in 2020, I happened to also participate in Microsoft Imagine Cup. So for those that don't know what Imagine Cup is, it's like Microsoft's global hackathon for students. So as a student, you can definitely apply for Imagine Cup. If you have a cool project, you can submit it and you never know, you can actually be a winner and take home more than 10 million uh, Kenya shillings. And that is money that has no strings attached to it. So if you're interested to learn more about it, uh, you can just visit imaginecup.microsoft.com. And so um, having participated through that program, uh, that competition, our team made it to the regional finals where we emerged from up, and that gave me a lot of visibility in terms of, you know, like this is the team that made it to the regionals. And so I was given the Imagine Cup track in the student ambassador program to manage. So basically what I did was help other students uh, learn how they can participate in such a competition, how they can collaborate on projects together. And that went on for the better part of 2022. So that is the track that I was leading. And then uh, I think the effort that I made because all the events were online. So all this effort that I had put into the program uh, that got um, recognized and I was nominated for the gold milestone. So Aaron has shared the four different milestones. So after joining the program, I was an alpha. I completed my first learning path because for me to empower others, I needed to have the basic knowledge of what I was to teach them. So I spent the better time of the better part of the time that I joined the program, just skilling up, uh, learning on Microsoft Learn. And then I held my first event in school. I was promoted to the better milestone. And then after having all these uh, virtual engagements, uh, that was actually seen, it was appreciated and I was nominated and I became the second gold, um, you know, the second female gold ambassador in Kenya, right after Bethany. So yeah, I think that's how my journey had been. Then in 2021, I got a chance to now uh, work together with the Microsoft office here in Kenya. So this is the other benefit of being a student ambassador. You get access to a very strong network that can also help you in your personal career life. So I started poking around the ADC programs. I saw they had a lot of student initiatives and it started by just volunteering. So I would just volunteer to help them in, run, in running something. If I had any idea, I would pitch it to them. And basically my engagement with ADC helped me get a lot of skills on how to collaborate with people. And from that experience last year in January, I, I was working there part time. I was still a student, so I was just working there part time as a Game of Learners ambassador. So basically I was just collaborating with PMs to help other students and rather or rather run the student engagements that they had. So that went on for six months. And after the six months, I had really learned the Microsoft culture. So I, I think if I had not been through the student ambassador program, I would not have found, you know, a way to actually start these conversations and build very strong relationships with individuals at the ADC. So after the six months, I stayed for one month and then I went back to ADC for my three month industrial attachment where I was just working on some of the projects that the ADC would give us as at Achieves. And that also gave us like a whole bunch of experience on how you can collaborate with software engineers. So I can say that it was an amazing journey. Then my journey as a student ambassador started, ended last year because I graduated from DECUT in December. So I had to exit the student ambassador program, but I can tell you there's a lot that I had learned and I didn't know that I would actually be where I was yesterday, uh, last year when I was applying for that program. So earlier this year, there was an open role, an academic cloud advocate role. And to my, su to my surprise, the job description of that role was exactly what I was doing as a student ambassador. So I would just go through what Microsoft is looking for. So they were giving out a full time uh, position. And to my surprise, everything that I was currently doing as a student ambassador is exactly what they were asking for. So I count myself as one of the lucky people because I got to interview for something that I was already doing. And that is basically just how I landed at Microsoft for my current role. 
And yeah, so what I, what I currently do, my primary area of focus is basically to empower other students, help them see what opportunities for our, we have for them here at Microsoft and to just help them in the adoption of these different services. So yeah, I believe that's my journey. Uh, in case I've left anything out, Bethany can just chip in because I think we even knew each other from the Student Ambassador Program. So just as Aaron said, it's also a place where you can make long lasting friendships. So yeah, thank you so much for having me and I'm happy to respond to any questions you may have. Okay, thank you so much, Julia and Victor for that. I am sure you have all learned a lot on what the Student Ambassador Program can give you. So as they've mentioned, it can help you progress in your career. It helps you gives it gives you different alternatives of what you can also be able to do. So as they mentioned, we normally have existing communities in schools, but because we are approaching elections, I'm not sure we'll be having any in-person engagements for the next few months. But then we have an engagement called the Game of Learners Clinics. So if you want to skill up in AI and uh, machine learning, especially on Azure, you want to build things, you want to do demos that your lecturers will be like, oh, wow, you can join us at aka.ms slash GOLAIML. So that session will help you build your AI skills. You'll also get certified in one of the Microsoft exams. And lastly, you'll be able to participate uh, in a hackathon at the end and you'll win cool prizes. Of course, to show that you were part of the program, you'll also get a badge of participation. So if you're interested, that's a program you can apply to. You also have weekly, monthly sessions, weekly sessions on a new program that we just launched. So you can read more about the sessions, the workshops, if you want to get skilled up, if you want to improve your skills on not just AI necessarily, but also other programs like um, web development, Power Platform and so on. If you do not know what Power Platform is, probably you can go and check one of the sessions to understand what exactly I'm talking about. And then the last, uh, the last thing I can talk about is um, we have a WhatsApp group for students from JQuad. So if you want to meet other students, alumni and existing students who can help you in your tech journey, you can go ahead and join the WhatsApp group, aka.ms slash JQuad WhatsApp. So this group brings together different individuals from JQuad. As I've said, it's also a combination of alumni as well as current students who are interested, of course, in tech. So if you want to learn more about the program, learn more about everything else, join that group and you can go ahead, ask your questions and so on. And uh, the last resource I'll share is, uh, so we've probably mentioned a lot about how you can get started, how the program has guided us. But then probably as a new student, you might be wondering how exactly you can get started in which which technological area you can focus on. So you just go to aka.ms slash learn student and there are sessions there called intro to tech skills. So intro to tech skills will, if you're new to tech, if you have no idea of what exactly Power Platform is or web development, or you just want to learn a bit on AI, go there and you'll find different sessions, both video and blogs and learning paths that will guide you to understand what the different topics entail. So if you want to continue your skilling up journey and so on, you can go there. And then probably something I forgot to mention for the Game of Learners Clinics for AI and ML, the application ends on 30th June. So if you really want to be part of the program, now is the time to apply because by 30th June, the application will be closed. But other than that, thank you so much for joining in. We have, uh, I think we have one of the lecturers here with us today. So probably I can invite her to just say a word and then we can call it a day. So yeah, Jen Mugik, are you able to unmute for a minute to just say hi to everyone? 
Okay, uh, thank you, Bethany, uh, and uh, thank you, everyone from JQuart, to uh, um, having a honored this uh, meeting. Uh, it is awesome, and also uh, we are learning new things. And uh, by the way, Jay, uh, as uh, alumni from JQuart, Bethany, I, you know we have the culture of reading. We read, yeah. so that's how we make it. Uh, so I, I, I can see a number of students who had approached me about this program, like um, one of the students, Jeremy. Jeremy was very, and I sent you an email because Jeremy kept on asking, and I hope he's going to do something. He has, uh, he's a good student. Uh, and uh, for the others, uh, you know how we have been doing it. Uh, for, for me, by the way, this is what I do. I interact with students on a daily basis. And uh, uh, um, Lee had also shared some uh, links, which I, I'm also going to share with the students. And our population is huge. And uh, we are going to make sure that everybody gets it. Uh, and this is actually for, for the students. Uh, and uh, I think for us, the educators, I think Ali shared with me something because a uh, whole student do at some point they get tired, but we have to keep on reminding them you have to wake up and keep reading because that is what takes you to your destiny. So I think uh, this is awesome. I uh, will keep in touch and then uh, um, back in our university, we are going to make sure that we are moving as far as the student ambassador program is concerned. And I also want to grow in this so that even when we get the first years, they are aware that we have this particular program. And even before you call the meeting, they know what they are expecting. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Jen. Uh, as I've mentioned, uh, feel free to ask any questions to us. I sent, I guess I sent each and every one of you an email, so you can just reply. That's my student ambassador email. But then thank you so much for joining in. I'll share the recording with everyone. So if your friends were not able to join, I'll be sharing the recording with them also. So thank you so much for joining. To answer Timothy's question, are boot camps also considered institutions? If your bootcamp is uh, two plus years and above, yes, you can apply it. But if it's just six months or one year, you know, the program is mainly targeted to programs that are two years and above. So, yeah. But otherwise, thank you so much. Oh, Stabo, you have your hands up. So maybe you can answer your question before I leave. Evening. Evening. Yeah, I can hear you. My name is Charles. Student from Kenyatta University. Yeah. And, and I would like to if you may please share your number with me so that I may oh, let me just share my email here. Bethany dot at my dot student ambassadors. I think that will be okay. This is my student ambassador's email, so feel free to reach me out from there, or you can join the group and then just ask for myself. But otherwise, thank you so much. I think, uh, oh, Robinson is asking if you can apply if there's already a student ambassador in your school. Yes, yes, you can apply. It doesn't, doesn't have a limit. But otherwise, thank you so much. I don't want to keep everyone here over time. So in case you have any questions, just send me an email. But otherwise, have a good rest of your evening. And yeah, till next time.